and welcome back and today I want to carry on talking about the TP-Link mesh router, the Deco. Now I've already done a hardware review of this just to the outside and some of the bits and bobs that you get inside but today I want to focus on the software. What is it about this device that makes it so damn appealing other than that great price tag? This is still to date the most affordable mesh home Wi-Fi system and although its speeds aren't exactly breathtaking by those two frequencies, 5 gig and 2.4 gigahertz, it's still gonna be interesting to see what the mobile application lets you do. Because at this price threshold, it's really kind of a bonus, because at, what, 180 quid for three of these, that's an incredibly low price. So let's make our way over to the mobile application and see what this bad boy can do. I want to do an overview and review of this software because as a number of you that have followed my other videos probably know, I'm not hugely keen on mesh systems that only allow you to configure and communicate with that system via a mobile app only. The TP-Link and their Deco M5 system is one of those devices. Much like Google Wi-Fi, much like the Linksys series that we looked at in previous videos, these are devices that can only be configured by mobile app. I'll keep this intro as short as possible, but my biggest problem with it is the fact that when you do um, want to configure the uh, mesh system, you're going to want to do it in a far more bespoke way the more you learn about networks. So particularly if you're a business user, the idea that you would have to do everything via a mobile phone isn't great. It doesn't look hugely professional, although it is incredibly user-friendly. The minute you want to do some stuff that might not be considered user-friendly and something a little bit more network intense, these applications restrict you hugely. Likewise, in a business setting, what you want is a centralized terminal or an access point over the network. You don't want to have to rely on Gavin in the IT department to use his mobile phone. So there's lots of reasons why I'm not a big fan of mesh systems that only let you configure with mobile apps. But I just thought I'd put that reservation in the beginning before we start conf um, looking at the software you get for your TP-Link Deco system. I've already installed the app. It was the same app we used for the setup. So let's go straight in. There's the kitty. Ah, scritches. And make our way into the Deco system. Now, I know it seems like I'm starting on a real downer with this, and it's not really fair to be so negative to this device. But at the same time, one of the things that really put me off this, despite its incredible affordability and incredibly user-friendly setup, which were both completely true, right away when you turned it on, the app, or when you were setting it up for the first time, it wouldn't let me go any further until I registered an account with TP-Link. Now, if I didn't have a router in place, chances are I might not be able to get an internet connection to register an account to start setting up my TP-Link device. So I was really put out by the fact that the installation couldn't be proceeded with until I registered an account with TP-Link. Not only because I think it's a bit mean to force uh, um, us to give our information over, email address and more, but moreover, we may not have even had an internet connection straight away off the bat with which to configure this application. Now, I've got my mobile phone connected to this device, um, and I'm going to, in the background, connect to this router with a wireless, um, a via Wi-Fi via a PC that's going to be connected off-site. So I'm just going to log that in in the background. So while we're looking at this application, let's see how long it takes for this device to pick up the Wi-Fi enabled PC that I'm now connecting with this device. So I'm on a three mesh network. So let's see how long it takes for this PC to appear on this app. Still waiting for it here. I've looked for it. I've got DeconNet, name we created earlier on, but it doesn't seem to have registered on the device yet, which isn't a great sign. Should appear over 2.4 gigahertz network. While it does that, why don't we look at the software itself? So friends of Deco, these are the ones where they're applications that you can utilize your mesh system to communicate with. If you're an Amazon Alexa user, you can then issue voice commands to your Alexa system such as turn on and off guest Wi-Fi, the, 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 the amount of controls that are available are a little limited, but you can install these skills on your TP-Link device and therefore issue voice commands to your Amazon Alexa device, your Amazon Echo, which will then be actioned via the network on your TP-Link device. IFTTT, or If This Then That, is, an, is a online software platform that connects devices using a system of Internet of Things or IOT commands. 
So you can arrange things on your home network where if one thing happens, it triggers another. And these can be everything from photos being saved to backups being created. If we make our way into this device, we can look more about the software. Now from there, we couldn't find that much more. We could go there and look at the current network and create a guest network this way. To create a brand new network within our device, we can start building from these options. But at the moment, we're using DeconNet and that should be more than enough. I'm gonna find out what exactly I did wrong in the background there with that PC, because I'm fairly certain I can't really blame this device for this PC not appearing on this network. I've already keyed in the password, but we'll do it again. And we'll go there. This is what you get for using a keyboard where the caps lock doesn't have a light and you're looking off camera. So I'm fairly certain we can blame me for this one. We can make our way back into the device. And we're connected and the PC has appeared. So again, that earlier thing was my issue, not the, and not the application. So let's not have a go at the app for that. Now, one area that, again, I'm not hugely keen on, because there is the messaging section here, which is like a notifications area for stuff that's happening on your local network. It's very basic. You can configure and add other options, but one thing you will find time and time again with this TP-Link device, from what I've seen previously, um, during a previous setup of this device is you're paying when you pay 180 pounds of this device you're paying largely for the hardware not the software if you go to the bottom here you've got all of these settings that we'll talk about in a bit but the actual networking simplicity uh, simplistic side of things is what you see here in front of you now the antivirus you can enable sort of typical stuff that most routers will give you but there is a surprisingly large amount of options for this, given when we looked at the Linksys series, the Velop mesh system, a lot of these options were hidden behind a paywall. Now, if we can access the malicious filtering content, intrusion prevention system, and more, and all of these are straight away, bang, they're enabled. And then you can find out a history of things that have happened. And once again, for a 180 quid mesh system, you're getting quite a lot for your money, and I'm quite impressed with that. Now, if we go to the parental controls, this is where we can set individual profiles for a different series of controls. So if we go for this one and we call it test one, we can select the filtration level that we want. So say we've got teenagers in the house, we can go for teens. And then from here, we can enable or disable different kinds of options. So again, we can block certain kinds of adult content, for example. We can block here and create even more things that we want to block where these websites will all be classed in the background by a certain kind of filter. Or we can add websites individually and manually. So you can add a website here and then it will add that website to that, that listing. So say we wanted to remove Facebook. Boom. Now Facebook has been added to the restricted list of applications. And again, you can add these filters, click next, and you can say when and how you want these things executed, whether you want them to only be at night, only be during the week and not weekends. These are options that are open to you, as well as configuring them on day and night schedules. And then of course, you can select individual devices that these filters, these parental filters will apply to. <clears throat> so it, this isn't as chewable and easy friendly and graphical as say Google Wi-Fi or Synology system, but it's nice to see that even in this 180 pound device, things are still pretty good. Next, let's move over to the deeper settings that are available in the back end of this app. So for example, we can do an internet speed test, which is powered by speed test, which I believe is the exact same company that you would utilize if you Google the word speed test and use the inbuilt Chrome option. Again, speed test was something I didn't really see in a number of the other apps. And for such a simplistic uh, device and at such an affordable level, it's pretty impressive some of the options you're getting here. They've managed to do to toe the line quite well between simplicity and you know utility. And although it isn't quite as good as the Google app, and of course not as good as Synology's SRM systems router manager, it's still nice that they've included some of these options. 
Um, there's obviously blacklisting of websites and users and MAC addresses. So certain devices can be blocked from utilizing this network. WPS gives us the ability to add devices by the simple click of one button, which is a nice option, something you don't see enough on certain devices that are available right now. And normally WPS factors as a physical hardware button, but this is one of the few times I've ever seen WPS as a software button, whereby you will press the WPS Easy Connection button on your physical accessory, and then WPS on the mobile app. Updating Deco gives you the ability to update the firmware on this device, and there's some advanced options there for you techie guys. Now again, it's nice that these options are here, and they're presented to you in quite a detailed way, but there's no denying that as someone, who, you know, myself, who's utilized a lot of technical items in his time, I do not enjoy configuring these items on a mobile app. I want to do these on a desktop PC with the options for copy paste and comparative options, the like of which you would find in say, for example, Windows Network Manager or the network connection settings of Windows 10. But there's still loads of good options there and even ones to configure and alter the running of each individual net mesh node. So for example, we can deactivate the LEDs and as I can see here in front of me, the LED turns off. And of course, one for night mode, so it's not going to annoy you during the night. There's loads of different options there in terms of history. And moving along, we can go into a few more deta uh, detailed options of those parental controls, antivirus, quality of service options, where you can change the priority and the flow of data towards different things. So for example, gaming requires a much, much sharper upload than download. It's far, far more important to keep those pings as low as possible whereas streaming requires a greater emphasis on downloading. So you can alter the priorities of your network and what's being done on your network to what is more important. So again, lovely options there. And in management, you can create new users that can configure your TP-Link mesh network very, very easily and add other users as and when you need them. And again, that's about it. On the left there, you've still got that Friends of Deco thing, but Again, a fair play to TP-Link for this. After utilizing the Linksys Velop and that application, which I found very limiting, and I've got to say was nowhere near as intuitive as it could have been the minute you've stepped out of simple setup, this TP-Link Deco M5 software is significantly better. And although I don't like the forced registration at the point of installation, and I'm definitely not a fan of mobile app-only setup, I've got to say that right now, this is probably one of my favorite apps for configuring a mesh system. They've managed to keep this lovely, straightforward, easy user interface here, where we can go into a little bit more information and assign priorities on individual apps. Or we can make our way into more detailed options. And for me personally, I think they've managed to toe the line between overly complex setup and a very user user friendly interface and still have access to a number of those more of those more complex options that most users and by most i mean at least 90 percent of people will never ever touch but i'm going to wrap things up here because we've still got the last video of comparing the tp link mesh system with synology's mesh system my current favorite in the mesh router stakes it's going to be a very different kind of a comparison given the price difference between them but i look forward to showing you that then otherwise this is a not a bad little app indeed although i wish there was a desktop option and the tp link deco is still a great affordable and excellent value mesh system i'll see you on the next video thank you so much for watching don't forget to click like and subscribe and i'll see you next time